without too much trouble, you know, I've sat here and I've created a nice little, nice little pad. Hey guys, Mitch here with the Audio Dabble YouTube channel, and today I want to dive into um, sound design a little bit, and more specifically, just take a focused look at LFOs and envelopes, and you know, like an like a modulation matrix and stuff like that. And I'm going to use Xeon and maybe another couple apps or whatever today to kind of show and explain envelopes and LFOs and things like that. That way, you can have a better understanding of how modulation works, what modulation is, and how you can use it, whether or not you're coming and starting from a initialized patch and building something that way, or if you're searching through patches and you find one, like a factory patch that you like, but you want to change it up, it's good to know and understand LFOs and you know all the different modulation aspects, so that way you can, instead of just starting twiddling knobs at random, you can kind of understand how the patch is designed. And so stick around and let's dive in. All right, so what is this modulation you were talking about earlier? Well, modulation, if you look up a definition of just like the word modulation, which I had it pulled up and now I don't. Um, it's the exertion of modifying or controlling influence on something. And that's what it is. It's kind of like automation. If you've ever dealt with automation, it's something that does something automatic. So if I wanted to patch here and I wanted to move the cutoff however I wanted to, like just pulse it like that right there, then I can sit there and do that with my finger. But that would get old. And now that finger is tied up doing something. You know, I can't just sit there and, you know, modulate that, you know, all day long. And so I want to have it do that itself. And so I can use an LFO. Or I can use modulation, which is modifying or controlling something. Okay. And so an LFO is a low frequency oscillator. It's a oscillator that doesn't make any sound, but you know, you still got the basic ones, sine, triangles, sawtooth, uh, squares. You got something called sample and hold, which kind of jumps points. Um, and then kind of a sample and hold, but instead of uh, jumping points, it kind of goes um, more fluid. And I can show you that in a bit, but let's take this matrix here because in Xeon, this is Xeon and in, it has, you know, it has some things over here and this is the source or this is what I want to use to modify. This is the modulation source is what I want to use to modulate whatever to control what I want. So I'm going to do LFO one and then I want to do the cutoff. And so I need to click here and find the filter cutoff. Now when I play a note, nothing happens because I don't have this amount knob up. And so as I turn the amount knob up, you will see that, you will hear that it's starting to change. And so I want to do the rate, which is how quickly the LFO is oscillating or it's moving, cycling. And so an LFO will constantly cycle over and over again, regardless of whether it's being used or not, it's going to continuously cycle. And you can hear that by, let me turn this down a little bit. Each one is a little bit different. matter it's going to continue to cycle it's not going to re-trigger the LFO each time the way I get it to do that is I have to go here and click on trigger and each time that I trigger it it's going to restart the LFO and so that's something to keep in mind as well if you want the LFO to be constantly flowy all the time and it just wherever you hit the note it'll just pick up at that point or if you want it to trigger each time you hit a note then you need to make sure you trigger the note as well. And then 
and the rate. So I have it set there and doing that. Now what if I wanted to bring this up kind of like in that motion. Okay. The resonance. So I can take and I can go let's say LFO2. Let's go to the filter resonance. Let's turn it up. Let's maybe Trigger both of these. You know, I can do that. You know, that's that sounds kind of getting old to me. Let's go ahead and just in, edit this patch. But that you know, that kind of gives you a good idea of what the LFOs are doing. Now I can go to pitch here. Let's modify the pitch. Yeah, kind of give you an understanding of the amount. Now one thing you can do um also is um <clears throat> you can filter you can modulate the mod amounts. If I want to modulate the mod amount of this with say LFO one. So that's kind of cool. So you can modulate the modulation amount. You can modulate the modulators. You can modulate a, the LFO rate and wave. So a lot of these, you know, each app is different, but you can just, you know, modulate pretty much anything you want to modulate in a lot of these apps. Um, and it's kind of fun. Now, you know, obviously this patch is not really useful. And so let's, um, let's kind of, kind of dive in and let's make something you know, a little more pleasing, uh, pleasing to the ear. And let's start out, I like, you know, pad sounds and that kind of brings you into explaining an envelope. Now envelope has, most of them have attack, decay, sustain, and release. And the attack, think about it um, as a starting point and then the attack is how quickly it gets to the end result of the note that you press. So if I turn all of these down, you can hear the attack as it goes higher takes longer to get up to that point of full volume. And that's really useful for a pad sound. Okay, but you notice that it just kind of just cuts off. Well, that's because the sustain is all the way down because the decay and sustain work together. And as you increase the decay, that's going to decrease or increase the amount of time it takes from once it reaches that top level to get down to that sustaining point. Now, if the sustain is all the way down, it's going to rise. It's going to fall. And fade out but let's uh, say the sustain was like say 50. It's going to rise up and it's going to drop down and if the decay is a little longer it'll rise up and it'll take a little bit longer to get down. Now the release is you know just what it says as you release the note how long does that note take to fade away if it all the way down to zero then it's just gonna instantly fade away but if you got it up to like say 50 you can hear it fading out now all of this is controlling the 
amplifier. Um, that's why it's called amp envelope. And most, if not all, synthesizers have some sort of amp envelope. And even if you didn't really understand what modulation is or anything like that, if you've messed around with the ADSR of a sound, then you have been modifying. Um, you've been doing some modulation. So congratulations on that because you already kind of knew a little bit even if you didn't know that you knew it. Something. But in the same way as it does the amp envelopes, it does the, you know, it'll control pitches and things like that. So I can actually select the amp envelope as the source. And if I go to the pitch, because the pitch is just something you can really hear instead of subtle T. So you can hear the pitch go up kind of decay down to a certain point and then release back down to the original point whenever I hit a note. Now I'm going to release it and it goes back down, fades down to the original note that was pressed. And you know, you can control the amount that it happens. You know, you can make some good sirens like this. weird things with that. If I go the opposite way. It'll go the opposite way. So that's always fun too. Let's see what that sounds like with this little sequence. That's kind of fun too. Um, anyways, let's get back to um, let's not do that. Let's do oscillator waves and let's do that with the filter envelope. And what this is doing is it's going to cycle through oscillator one's wave files here. If I turn this to poly. Like how it see how it's jumping. I don't like that sustain like that. So I want to put that sustain back down and maybe have the decay all the way up so that it slowly. Back down. You know, maybe we can take LFO two, LFO one, mod that up to the oscillator pulse width. Definitely want to do some something with the filter, but you can also notice you have a little envelope here, and this is kind of like a built-in filter envelope. It's going to look at this envelope and kind of modulate itself, so you don't have to necessarily use the modulation matrix here to modify and modulate the filter. Like the resonance a little bit. And get a little texture, so let's take LFO2 and let's go back up to the filter resonance. Turn that up. Now all it's left to do is just a little reverb on this. You know, without too much trouble, 
you know, I've sat here and I've created a nice little, nice little pad. You know, we can further explore. We can further explore this. Let's take um, let's take the LFO as well, and let's have it do some panning. Headphones for this definitely. The, uh, the amp a little bit, but yeah, I mean, there you have it. There's a nice little pad in Xeon. I'm gonna definitely save this guy. Um, save preset. Let's call it. Um, uh, Horrible names. Um, pad one. There we go. I'll just uh, poly pad. Pad one. Hey, I already had a pad two. Ha. Huh. So yeah. So so that's that. It's pretty 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 nice. And you'll notice you have another set of mods over here you could start messing with as well. And, and so now, like, if you found this patch, you're like, oh, I like this, but I kind of want to, you know, maybe I don't want to modulate the, the pulse width or I want to, you know, kind of tune down the how much it's going through the different filters. Now you kind of have an understanding of what each thing is going to do and so if you pull if you do pull up a patch in Xeon you're going to be like okay why well, kind of this is going here this is going here but there's pretty much universal and I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on um say factory but factory does offer a few things that um other scents uh, may not offer and let me just go ahead and re click on this in it patch here all right and so here's the the modulation matrix for um, factory and Jacob hack um, hack attack he's done a really good job um, he done a video on factory but I just I like this one if you're especially if you're like really really beginner and don't really understand what's going on like you can see here like I said earlier the LFO is automatically always going so right now this LFO even though it's not doing anything is cycling back and forth and I can change what it's doing and it's still cycling back and forth I can change the phase of it how quickly it's doing it and you hear nothing and it's modulating nothing but it's still running now if I go here and turn it to free it's not going to do anything, but if I change it back to MIDI gate, it's going to restart each time um, that it cycles through, and that's kind of the re-trigger. Now, you do have a one-shot here, and as you can see it um, jumping up and doing that one-shot one time. Um, so that was something that Xeon had. And so, just to give you a little example if I want oscillator one I can just click and drag either way either negative 100% or positive 100% and that's going to start modifying and the cool thing is you'll see it over here in this knob as well to do the cutoff turn this down and to say turn the attack up to like oh, let's say five seconds let's sustain it back down to 
64% and then slowly fade out. And you get visual representations of what each of the things are doing, which I think is really, really super helpful for someone who's just starting out. Um, and two, um, if you click on it and say you don't want you want aftertouch, then I can take aftertouch and I can say change this to pitch one here. And now let's go aftertouch and pitch. I'm using my launchpad pro. Um, That, but that's you know that's another type of modulation is um, you know pitch bend, um, the modulation wheel, aftertouch. All of those are a type of modulation as well. And if you want to change any of these, you just click on them. See a mod wheel. You know the pitch can actually be a modulating modulating source and a destination here because you got the sources over here and you've got the destinations over here. And you. All of those are being modulated with LFO2. So that's where some of the crazy things in Factory can get into. Um, but yeah, so that's that's pretty much it with uh, as far as you know modulation and envelopes and things. You can get really really creative and crazy and do some crazy weird pitch filter things or envelope things and you know just the sky's the limit but the key is just understanding and tracing back things to where they're going what's modulating what factory is really good at um, giving you a visual representation of it sometimes you just you know find the modulation matrix and kind of go through and then hopefully now you have a better understanding of how to kind of modify some of your patches and you know modify someone else's patches to, and kind of make it your own so thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully this was helpful and useful. And likes are always appreciated around here. Helps with ratings. Comment below on what's your favorite Iowa synth. You know, that's a good, good, easy question. Maybe get some conversations going on. You know, maybe there's some synthesizer out there that, you know, somebody in the community don't know. So what's your favorite um, Iowa synth for modulating things? You know, it's because there's a bunch of synths out there, but you know, since this video is specifically on modulating, what's your favorite synth out there that's got, you know, just some crazy modulation, um, you know, options out there that's just, you know, super fun and super weird or, or whatever. So uh, leave a comment below on that and um, yeah, like, comment, subscribe and do the little uh, Patreon thing um, if you're into supporting creators like that I do also have a picture uh, direct PayPal me link and if not then share it on your favorite social media all links are in the description and I will talk to you guys later